epilepsy surgery is done when medications don't work to stop a patient's seizures. The key to making it work is removing the spot that is triggering a patient's seizures. Now that spot can be anywhere in the brain. It's a problem for the patient and for us when it happens to be in an area that is critical for a patient's function. One such area is called the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain that controls memory. You can think of it as being your memory engine. In most people, if uh, we're talking about the hippocampus that's on the left side of their brain, then that's an engine for memory for words numbers, um, things that you, you use in your everyday life. If it's on the right side, it controls memory for visual uh, data. So information that can be critical for some people, but not necessarily everyone, but still highly important function. In most patients with epilepsy, that hippocampus is usually already damaged and scarred by the time they get to the point when they're considering surgery. So in those patients, removing a scarred abnormal tissue uh, isn't high risk as far as losing function goes, meaning we could offer these patients a surgery to remove that scar tissue without risking, in most situations, them losing critical function. Mm -hmm. The problem that we face is in patients where we know that's the area that's triggering their seizures, yet there is no scar. It looks perfectly normal when we image it and we look at it. So we are faced with a dilemma where if we remove it, then we have a, the seizures are more likely to go away, but so is the memory. And if we don't remove it completely, then the patients may have some memory function that is still left, but the seizures are more likely to come back. And we had to be making those decisions just based on what I stated, which is all hypothetical, but without having clear <coughs> guidance to tell us exactly what kind of risk are we taking when it comes to both the seizure recurrence risk and the memory loss risk with this type of surgery. So we didn't know how much of it should we spare, for example, to preserve memory. Um, does it really make a difference if we spare it but yet remove all of the brain tissue that's around it that's supposed to feed into it and help it function? Um, so it was a challenge that was coming back and back at us and we didn't have good information to help us know what to do. So this project that we did was looking at uh, more than 150 patients in our center who had to deal with this dilemma and ended up having one surgery or the other, meaning either we took it, the hippocampus out or we left it in after doing a lot of testing, you know, to guide either decision, and who also had detailed assessment of their memory before they had that surgery and then after they had their surgery. And then we used that information to help us develop an, um, a tool to allow us to tailor that decision making to an individual patient depending on what their imaging and what their testing and what their clinical situation looks like before surgery. So we could tell them before they decide what to do, if we go with option A, this is your risk of your seizures coming back, but these are your chances of protecting your memory. If we go with option B, these are this is what you're looking at and then as a patient you can make an informed decision of which one of the two you want to go with. It's very individualized. I would be remiss to say that there is a, a one-size-fits-all with this. Some patients who have been dealing with epilepsy for a very long time and have lost their jobs and lost their independence and basically cannot function now anyway, regardless of what their memory function is because of a very high seizure burden, um, would say, 
uh, I, I would afford to have some memory loss, but get rid of my seizures and give me back my independence. And we would help them then with developing strategies to help them compensate for that memory loss. It, it's never a memory loss where we are talking about uh, you know, people not knowing where they are. It, with the memory loss we're talking about is something where right now it takes you, say, five seconds to memorize a phone number, it would take you 10 or 15, you know. So there is always strategies to work around it. Sometimes it can be more devastating than what I mentioned, but um, patients decide. There are other patients who just started having seizures. Um, they you know they're not and they have a very high level job for example where they cannot afford even that five versus ten second difference in how quickly they can memorize things and for them their memory is very critical so they will decide to go with the lower chance of success surgery to try it out at least and see if it can help with their seizures without hurting their memory too much. Uh, w what we are presenting here at the, the meeting is the high level findings from the study, uh, but um, sooner rather than later we will have the full uh, study published uh, for people to look at and it will include an online version uh, of this um, prediction tool that I mentioned so that uh, patients and physicians can start using it. That's the goal.